Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel. This lecture is on representing simple sentences. The short version is we're going to use single letters to represent single simple sentences. But to understand the motivation about why we're doing that, well, let's look at a few arguments. Here's an argument. If you are watching this video, you are learning logic. You are watching this video, therefore you are learning logic. And here's another argument. If Dennis Rodman goes to North Korea, he is crazy. Dennis Rodman goes to North Korea, therefore he is crazy. And here's a third argument. If Homeland has another Dana-centric episode, I stop watching the show. Homeland has another Dana-centric episode, therefore I stop watching the show. You'll notice that there's a common theme among all three of those examples. It's if something, then something else, something, therefore something else. Now, when we have this common theme, we should be at least a little bit intrigued because these are logically identical arguments, right? If something, then something else, something, therefore something else. Each and every one of those examples follows that form. So you might ask yourself then, why should we consider each of those individually when we could consider them all together at once? And the answer is that we shouldn't. We should be looking at them all at once and not looking at them individually. And the reason is, I think, clear. It's that this is more efficient. And it's the same reason why in algebra, you don't continually use numbers. You learn how to get used to playing with variables so you can solve for a whole class of outcomes in one fell swoop rather than looking at each and every single possibility. You can just replace it with X and Y, and suddenly you're looking at a whole bunch of different cases all at once. That's why we use algebra, and that's why we're going to switch over from using simple sentences in full length words and reduce them down to just single letters. So speaking of that, to represent simple sentences, we're going to be using capital letters. For example, P, Q, and R. Those are all capital letters. That's what we're going to be using in this series. I'm going to make a note here that in other logic texts or other logic classrooms, perhaps a professor that you have might represent simple sentences with lowercase letters. This is just something that other people do differently. I'm going to try to point out these differences whenever they come up throughout this course. But for here, because this font looks prettier when I use capital letters, I'm going to be using the capital letters Again, there's nothing wrong with using lowercase letters. In fact, I've had two different professors teach me logic. One used uppercase letters, one used lowercase letters. It's all the same. We're just using uppercase letters because that's what I want to use. Now, let's see a few examples of what we're going to be doing here. So this is example two from last lecture, the fans go into work or the fans cry out of depression. There are two simple sentences, the fans go into work and the fans cry out of depression. So instead of looking at that sentence like that, when we're playing around using logical inference, we're going to replace those sentences with something like W or C, where W is the fans go to work and C is the fans cry out of depression. Now, here I use the W and C to reflect what's going on in the sentences. The W reflects work. The C represents crying. Eventually, we're going to be so unconcerned with the substantive meaning of sentences. Instead, we're going to be focusing on the logical validity of the argument that we're not even going to care about making sure that the letters match up to what's going on substantively. But for here, I just did that there. Example six from last lecture, if I'm hungry and I do not have concern for my health, then I eat in and out. Three simple sentences, I am hungry, I have concern for my health, and I eat in and out. We can replace all of that bulky lettering with just if H and not C, then E, where H is I am hungry, C is I have concern for my health, and E is I eat in and out. There are tons of benefits, but to summarize, the two most important benefits to doing things this way is that one, it shows the similarities between two substantively different arguments. That's what we looked at with the motivation at the beginning of this lecture. And secondly, these things are just much, much easier to work with these single letters rather than having those big, long sentences. Imagine trying to prove logical validity using big, long sentences and having to copy out all of that sentence every single time. It's going to be very frustrating if we do it that way, much more efficient if we do it this way. So we're done with understanding how to represent simple sentences. And in the next lecture, instead of having something like if H and not C, then E, we're going to start learning how to use logical operators and logical connectors like if then statements and statements or statements and negations like not, for example, not C. So ooh, not C, that sounds it's kind of wrong. Uh, well, anyway, that's wrapping up this video, and we will take care of the negation and hopefully not say not see any more th throughout this course. Uh, so I'm just going to wrap things up now, and I'll see you later. Take care.